Good morning, everyone. You're listening to Radio Maria, a Christian voice in your home. And I have uh, the good opportunity to uh, uh, speak with Father Carney once again. Uh, many of you heard our conversation uh, last week as we talked about the holy face of Jesus and the devotion to the holy face. And uh, many of you uh, wrote me and asked me to uh, give you more of a how-to um, type of presentation. Uh, you wanted to know more about the chaplet of the Holy Face, uh, the different sacramentals that are part of the devotion, uh, some books you might recommend. So uh, we're here to answer those questions today. We're here to give you some resources and to assist you in this journey. And so I want to welcome back to Radio Maria, Father Lawrence Carney. Mr. Smith, thanks for having me again. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, Father Carney, we look to you as a great resource uh, person. Uh, you have written an excellent book called The Secrets of the Holy Face, and it is available through 10 books. And we highly recommend everyone get a copy of this book because it uh, tells a story, a great story of how God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Uh, but he sent his son to show us his face so that we would be saved. And so uh, you have a great love for spreading this devotion. And um, again, we'll begin with, uh, again, how people can um, sign up uh, for the Holy Face devotion. I, people keep asking me, oh, I've heard Father Carney recommend that I should join the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face and uh, the Confraternity of the Holy Rosary. Uh, Father, spend a few moments talking about these two um, great organizations, I'd like to say organization but movements in the church, the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face and the Confraternity of the Holy Rosary, and why it's so important, it's so important that we uh, join and sign up for these uh, beautiful apostolates. Here, Mr. Smith. So I just want to answer simply at the very beginning of this answer, how do you sign up for the Arch Confraternity? There is a application, and we have a PDF on our website. If you go to ecclesiastical enrollments, so it's church enrollments, and we have the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face, and there people can pull it up, and there's many ways they can present that to tours. They can print it off and fill it out. It has it's in French, but it has English subtitles. And they can simply take a picture of it and email it to the email that's on the form. Or they can print it out and fill it out and mail it by normal mail. Or they can even send an email to the website on that form. And that's how they do it. And then for the confraternity of the rosary, they can go to our website and we have different regions in the US where the Dominicans will take their enrollment. And that's, I think, mostly done online. There's maybe one region that is still paper. So going back to the why of the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face, well, it's an Arch Confraternity that's very high in canonical order of group. So the highest group is a first order of religious. That would be priests who are Dominicans, priests who are Carmelites. And then the second level is second order. That would be sisters, Benedictines, you know, sisters who are Dominicans. And then a third order would be lay people who would be Carmelites. And even priests could be a third order Secular priests could be a third order of Carmelites. And then the next level below that is an arch confraternity. So you see how high this army is in the canonical in the canonical system. So why should one join any of these confraternities at all? Well, it's just like enlisting in an army. If you're going to fight officially for your country, you need to enroll. And that's why men are called enlisted at the bottom ranks in most militaries. And then officers are commissioned because the president or the, the king is the one that, in a way, uh, knights them. You know, like the king would take a, 
a, a, a sword and put it on their shoulders as a symbol that he's appointing them. So we, in a spiritual way, we enroll so that we can be soldiers and have that connection formally with Holy Mother of the Church and to fight as an official army that's been approved by uh, no, the highest person in the church, which is the Pope. And so the Arch Confraternity was established as an Arch Confraternity in 1885. It existed in 1884, but Pope Leo XIII elevated it to an Arch Confraternity. So when I saw this devotion for the first time and I was reading it, my priestly sense just went on fire. It's like, whoa, this, this is a whole army that nobody knows about. And we can simply sign up. This was before COVID. We could simply sign up and, and fight for the reverence that's due to God, to his face, to make reparation for that what's due. And then when I saw that this had all these canonical things and that Jesus was telling Sister Mary St. Peter how she has to talk to the archbishop and how it needs to get approved by the church and how she suffered so much for doing that. It, it just spoke to my heart. And I was like, I got to be... In, I've got to lead an army here because it's already all the 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 rules and how to do it. It's all there. It's just we need to promote it. So, I mean, is that pretty much what you're looking for in that question, in your question? Oh, yes, because, I mean, I speak from personal experience. Uh, my good wife and I enrolled in the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face. We went online. We found the application and we mailed off the application. And uh, a few months later, we received uh, from the Arch Confraternity a beautiful certificate uh, of enrollment uh, saying that we were members, uh, a few little um, uh, beautiful items, uh, again, a holy face crucifix, um, a, a, a scapular, uh, a booklet. So it was just a beautiful um uh, presentation when we opened up the envelope. Uh, but then we started to realize, wow, we are joining a group of people uh, that include St. Therese uh, of the Child Jesus and the Holy Face. Her father, uh, St. <laughs> Her father, um, you know, um, again, the, the, I want to say the whole Martin family practically, but there are saints in this arch confraternity. And I thought, wow. And I looked at what was required to be a member. You know, I'm, um, you know, I don't want to, um, I'm, I'm not saying I'm lazy. I'm just saying I like to, um, you know, uh, enjoy my time. But the commitment was so just, it wasn't that much. I mean, to be a member of the Arch Confraternity and to enjoy the um, the blessings uh, and the graces attached to it, we say one Our Father, one Hail Mary, and one Glory Be uh, to uh, be a part of the Arch Confraternity. And we say just three simple prayers. Uh, Sit nomen Domini Benedictu, Vada Retro Santana. Now I pray them in Latin. Um, but again, it's um, a beautiful thing. Blessed be the name of the Lord and get behind me, Satan, and those beautiful pastors from Scripture, Lord, Lord, show us thy face, and we shall be saved. And I thought, wow, that's two minutes a day to be a member of the Arch Confraternity and to receive all these blessings. Sign me up. Sign me up. And so, of course, I always say to people, it's one of the easiest um, devotions, and I think this is what our Lord knows our hearts. He wants us to know what do what is easy. Now, as you journey with the Holy Face and Our Lady, uh, you see the difficulty and the challenge of the mission. But to sign up and to receive those graces of blessing, it's easy. So again, at your website, Father, um, it's simply uh, www.martinians.org. Uh, you have that tab about how to sign up for the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Face and the Confraternity of the Holy Rosary. So um, like I say... Um, Heaven is built on a hill. We need to climb, uh, but it's an easier climb when you've got people with you, behind you, uh, both the living members of the Arch Confraternity and the deceased members. Uh, of course, that includes St. Therese and St. Louis Martin. So uh, God is good. God is good. Uh, anything else, Father, that you may add to the um, 
uh, conversation about these two uh, great organizations and again great movements in the church um i know that uh, my, my patron is um is <laughs> blessed alan de la roche i took on oh. his uh, name when i was confirmed and uh, and i host a holy rosary program for the last 20 years in canada so i think that i always say be careful what saints you choose but uh, they will get you involved and uh, of course saint therese chose the child jesus and the holy face and we're talking today about this great devotion but i know you've been have you been to tours father to uh, go yeah. to the um i guess the home of the arch confraternity no i plan to go there in may all so right soon good we'll pray for your trip we'll pray for your trip and i was told uh, be patient uh, that it does take time to uh, receive your enrollment certificates uh, but God keeps the registry. So uh, when you send off your uh, enrollment, let's just say, I'd like to say God is the, is the master bookkeeper and you are enrolled, but it may take a while to receive your certificate, but um, be patient. They will get to it. I know they're, they've are they been busy. They've been busy over the last couple of years, especially uh, with this rise of this devotion. So, all right. Now, I just came from a conference of 300 attendees and they came to uh, my table where I have the relics of the Holy Face and uh, many of them uh, purchased chaplets and wanted to know how to do more. And so I directed them to you, your website again, Father, um, again, www.martinians.org. And they see, uh, they can see that there's levels of, of participation and um, I know in the church, that's what you're always going to have. You have the people who just want to, you know, receive a newsletter, know about the movement. You have other ones that want to say the prayers. You have other ones that want to um, form little chapters and have a monthly meeting. Um, let's talk a little bit about that, because I think this is where we want to meet our listeners where they're at. Again, some go all in. Uh, others want to just pace themselves. So uh, you've uh, set up a beautiful system uh, of uh, these five levels, I like to say, of participation within the League of St. Martin from, you know, subscribers, defenders, archers, captains, etc. So, Father, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, different ways to participate in the spiritual life of the League of St. Martin. Sure. So I tell people, the League of St. Martin is an ecclesiastical um, pious association of the faithful. And we're a private organization in canon law that our bishop knows about. So we're very low. We're second from the lowest on canon law. So we're coaches. We're not the ones that made up this devotion. We're the ones that promote it. So we're on the front line trying to bring people into becoming confraternities themselves so i when i was little i liked to play war with my brothers and and neighbors and i would put little um like the i would look in the encyclopedia for the air force and i would have different levels of the of you know air force people and i would make everyone a private and i was the sergeant because i was in charge and then when we fought, we would have ceremonies of elevation. And if someone was really bad, we would demote them. So this system really encouraged uh, the boys of the, the neighborhood to, 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 to think about battle and to fight. Well, now this, I'm using this in a spiritual way. So we have different levels. We have subscribers at the lowest. Then we have defenders. And then we have archers, and then we have captains, and then we have arch captains, and then other captains beyond. So with the subscribers, that's simple. When someone wants to subscribe, they basically give us their information, their email, and then they will get an email from us. We don't send out a monthly or quarterly or periodically. We send it out when it's needed. We don't want to flood people's emails. But if people want to subscribe, then they're going to know what's going on. So, for example, we had our annual conference of the Holy Face in Wichita. It was November 9, 10, and 11. We sold out this year the first time. This was our third time. And people, 
we don't they don't really find out about this unless they're subscribers. And if they look at their emails when they get one from us, we tell people now you can register. And so the, the registration to come to our conference was slow, but we in the last two weeks we sold out. And so if people want to know about that and other things that are going on, then they should at least subscribe. There's no commitment on their part. They can delete the emails, they can read them, that's it. And then the next level is actually when those who want to become defenders, they get engaged in becoming um, people that will make reparation. So we have some instructions about what their duties are. They're very small, but they basically have to make reparation when they hear about blasphemy, when they hear the Lord's name said in vain. So, and they're also told if they're like a father of family, they have to correct their spouse and children if they're blaspheming, because that's direct authority. And they have responsibility for them as subjects. And the mother, the same for her children a teacher in her classroom, especially in a Catholic school. And anybody else that wants to be a defender. And it, I got this from the revelations of Sister Mary St. Peter, where God wanted to have a group called the Defenders of the Holy Name of God. Well, there's no group that formally enrolls people to become defenders. There's no group that the church has approved to do that. The arch confraternity of the Holy Face um, doesn't call these people that enroll defenders, but we do it informally. We don't, and we, when people want to become defenders, we simply say, great, we'll take that application and that's it. We don't send them a form or a certificate. So we're not in charge of that. We don't want to be in charge of it. We're just helping people to learn the spirituality of being an offender of the name of God. The next level is archers and I decided to call them archers because of the golden arrow prayer. The golden arrow prayer, Jesus told Sister Mary St. Peter, was like shooting a, an arrow, a sweet arrow, that would wound the sacred heart to open up the sacred heart to pour out graces. So when people become archers, there's a lot more involvement. They need to enroll in the arch confraternity of the holy face or a confraternity of the holy face. And they need to fulfill the six requirements, one of them being the monthly meeting. So you you got to pray together in order to defend God in, in, a, in a formal way. That's what Jesus was telling Sister Mary St. Peter, this army, and he was setting it up this way. So they're archers. Then there's captains. So if there's no group, there's no monthly meetings happening in anyone's area. This is when a captain needs to be nominated and they can nominate themselves and they need to fill out a form with their phone number and, and stuff. And then I will call them and have a conversation to see if they're ready, see if they have a good fit. We like our captains to be well disposed to reverence. And that is also the Latin mass if it's available uh, we want them to love the Latin Mass, not to hate it. If they hate it, they're not going to be a good fit because the aims of the League of St. Martin are reparation, reverence, and reversion. So reverence is having a great devotion to the face of Jesus and the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And the Latin Mass, I hope that it comes back strong someday. So that's how someone becomes a captain. And once the captain is approved by me after they have their first meeting, they give me some information like the city they live in and, and we put that on our captain role. And then we put that on our map. We don't put anyone's address down because we don't want anyone to be found. We just put the city and the year that they became a, a group called, the, we call them chapters of the League of St. Martin. Okay, so then there's captains. And then when there's a lot of groups in an area, there are a lot of leagues, I call them, then I make an arch captain. So we have three of them right now. And they, the, the arch captain then communicates with all the other captains and then reports directly to me. 
So it has that chain of command. So I'm not directly talking to all the different leaks that are starting. And then there's higher levels and these are really important. So there's an arch captain and then there's a cardinal uh, league and then be a cardinal captain. Then we have a papal league and um, papal captain. And the, the goal is there is that these captains have a good relationship with their local clergy. So with their bishop and the priests, because the goal is that they become a confraternity themselves, independent of the League of St. Martin. And this has to develop with a good relationship with their bishops, because the only way to start a new confraternity, the archbishop told us, the archbishop of Tours, is they have to fill out statutes and submit them to the local ordinary, and then he approves of them. So if if one of these groups is in the Diocese of Wichita, Kansas, they would make statutes given to the Bishop of Wichita, Kansas, and if he approves them, then they become a confraternity. And that's way up high in the canonical system of, of governance, and so they get really powerful when they pray that, that way, that formally. So I hope this system makes sense. I don't know if you have any questions about it. Well, it does, because I think, again, it comes down to people are saying, I want to promote this devotion. Yes, they are blasphemies everywhere. I go to the grocery store. I go to the mall. I hear the name of the Lord taken in vain time and time again. And we can combat this uh, beautiful work of making reparation and counteracting these blasphemies. And when you mentioned about the defenders, uh, we all can be defenders, uh, defend the holy name of God. And we can't be silent anymore. We need to uh, fight, uh, engage them in battle. And fraternal correction goes a long way. It's amazing when someone uses the name of the Lord in vain, and then you correct that person they go, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that. And sometimes they don't know what they're doing. And sometimes they do. But we have to make that correction. And so being a defender is just uh, uh, something that we can start with. And I can see why you've incorporated that into the League of St. Martin. I think many people uh, would probably um, lean toward the archer's um, um, moniker, I like to say, those who like to pray. And uh, there are many people that are saying, I can pray. Uh, I may not be able to go to meetings at a church, but I can pray. And uh, that is something that's very beautiful. And uh, I know my wife and I, we um, we just started praying during COVID, praying the chaplet to the Holy Face. Because uh, when we received our little um, you know, package from the Arch Confraternity, uh, they made it very clear. Um, part of your duty of being a member of the Arch Confraternity is to pray, um, to wear, um, you know, a, a small effigy of the Holy Face, be it the Holy Face medal or the Holy Face crucifix, um, and of course, uh, but to uh, to promulgate or promote the devotion, all of these things. And you know, uh, whenever I um, give a presentation, I try to bring all of these beautiful uh, sacramentals, these blessed items, and I encourage people to pick up, um, you know, uh, again, a good supply of them. Uh, I said this would be a show and tell. And I always say, you know, uh, chaplets of the Holy Face can be uh, simple plastic beads. They don't have to be the gunmetal uh, version that you see out there. Uh, there's other people that sell uh, beautiful uh, chaplets. Uh, again, you can find them uh, in many places, but uh, still, uh, it's one of these things where I strongly recommend everyone to uh, pick up a Holy Face medal. Uh, there's a beautiful devotion. I mean, and grace is attached to wearing the medal. And we'll do a program uh, about sacramentals, Father. I know that uh, our time flies here at Radio Maria, and uh, we just get started, I think, talking about uh, different uh, things about the Holy Face, and we'll, of course, have you back. But before you go, uh, I want to bring people, uh, their attention to the manual of the Holy Face. Um, and I think there is, uh, many of your questions will be answered 
by picking up a copy of the manual of the Holy Face. And I said, kind of say to people, if you want a book that contains beautiful litanies, beautiful prayers, beautiful devotions, uh, then the manual of the Holy Face has that. And it also has the history of uh, all the Vatican documents. And uh, I'd like to always say, this is church approved. This devotion uh, has a great canonical history. Uh, Pope Leo XIII, of course, um, um, gave his blessing to this arch confraternity. But this manual of Holy Face is a must in everyone's library. So uh, we want to spend just a few moments that we have talking a little bit about this uh, manual. Uh, Father, I know you've uh, recommended this manual time and time again, and I know that you've uh, put together a beautiful leather-bound edition of this manual of the Holy Face, and it's available on your website. Uh, but let's talk a little bit of, about the manual uh, why we uh, before we head off to a break here at Radio Maria. Sure. So I found the manual online, and we found there were two copies in libraries in the United States. So I, I asked for an interlibrary loan and it never came. And I asked them, please send it to us. And they said, no, we can't anymore. So I found out the devil does not want us to get this. So my idea was let's take the whole book that's online and get it printed out so people can have it in their hands. It's no good to continue to look at a computer when one wants to pray, it's nice to have a book they can take with them into a chapel or into an oratory or outside. So this book simply gives the six conditions of being associated with the arch confraternity. And to touch back from what you mentioned earlier, if you enroll and you don't receive enrollment, God's already received enrollment. And that's why there's two steps to be inscribed on the register of the oratory of the holy face. So that's enrolling. And then the second one is receiving the rule with their certificate of admission. So you see how that is? That's a once in a lifetime deal. And and then we're we're two we're two thirds of the way done. One third of the way done, two thirds to go. And then you mentioned every day that recite the intentions of the Arch Confraternity in Latin or English, a pater, ave and gloria. The Lord show us that face and we shall be saved. Where an effigy you said. The fifth one to go to the monthly meetings as far as possible. And the sixth one to propagate to the utmost of the power, the devotion to the suffering face of the Lord. So this is how the church wants members to live the as the arch confraternity has it. So this is how heaven wants us to live it. It may be hard to go to the monthly meetings if possible, but the more effort we put into it, the more generosity and abandonment and mortification that we have, our prayers are going to be much more efficacious. And then just very quickly, this was given the approbation of the Monsignor, the most reverend Archbishop of Tours, and the English edition was printed in 1887. So I just like to simply recopy it. I don't like to make it into any other fancy typeset because they've done such a good job. And then there, the table of contents says it all. There's four parts. The first part talks about the history. It's a very quick summary. And I read this over and over from cover to cover. So I go through this all the time so I can pick up new things. Like you mentioned, how this has been approved by the church by Pope Leo XIII. And just last night, I was reading a long list of cardinals and bishops who approved of this so i'll show you there's just a, a list of them right there in france there's his eminence cardinal gilbert archbishop of paris and then we have more in france and we have belgium and italy and spain and then we have switzerland and austria england ireland i love this united states hits home his eminence cardinal mccloskey archbishop of new york so I'm sure some people know about him and Monsignor Gibbons, the Archbishop of Baltimore. So it's so neat. And I think priests, I think it's, it's invaluable for priests that they see this, that it's not just something that fell from the sky and it's just a private 
devotion that people are following and priests don't really have time for that. I can understand, but this is just so fundamental. And then it talks about the litanies and forms of prayers. There's two litanies of the Holy face. There's a cons two consecrations to the Holy face. There's the formulae that months our venerable little pot used when he took oil from his burning lamp in front of the Holy face and healed over 6,000 people with certified miracles. There's a prayer of Pius the ninth. And then there's other devotions, the stations of the cross and meditations with the Holy face and the rosary and the little scapular of the Holy face, the little chaplet of the Holy face and the little sachet. So it can go, I can go on and on. It's just a rich deposit and people can simply have one of these and it's a great investment for a lifetime. And that's why we put them on leather covers. We have a young man that makes them so he can have a little bit of, an, uh, of a living to, uh, a means. But we want these books to be special, not just something you buy and then you put it on your bookshelf and don't ever look at it again, but something that's very special. So I right. hope that helps. Oh, it does. It does. And we're coming up to our break here, Father. So we're going to have you back. We're going to talk more about the manual of the Holy Face. And uh, we just uh, scratched the surface today. So uh, we'd love to have you back here on Radio Maria. And a reminder to everyone to pick up a copy of the book, uh, The Secrets of the Holy Face by Father Lawrence Carney, available on TAN Books. And uh, again, uh, we ask you to uh, visit the website www.martinians.org to find out more. Uh, Father Carney, could you uh, end this segment with a blessing? Sure. In nomine Pati, the Fuse, Peter, to Sancti Amen. Seat nomen domine benedictum, et ex hoc nunc usque in seculo. Domine exari oration meam, et clamor meo sate venia. Dominus vobiscu. Benedictus omnipotentis patris et fili spiritus undescended super vos et mania semper. Amen. Amen. You are listening to Radio Maria, a Christian voice in your home. 